What's up guys, Jack here with MTS, and a few weeks ago I got a call from one of my clients, specifically the ones out in Virginia, the ones with the big barn network and the big house network. And so I had to go out there to take a look at the barn and fix that stuff up. Make sure you get subscribed for that because that video is coming out pretty shortly and you're not going to want to miss it. We had to fix power, mount some new access points, it was a mess. But while I was out there, I also did some upgrades to the house. So this video is gonna be about deploying some new access points, converting some voice lines into data lines, and laying the groundwork for when I go back out there in February to put everything into a rack, get everything finally cleaned up, and really just wrap up this whole Virginia house network. So let's get into it. Landed, now we're at Micro Center picking up stuff for this job. It was, this is fun. This is not what I thought I'd be doing with my day. All right, so we have some gear for round two and a half. Then we have a Nano HD. We also have three Inwall HDs. The other one is just not here right now. Um, it's in the other room. And then an extra APAC Pro. Okay, so this is the really ugly networking room. This setup is terrible. I'm gonna be taking down all of this PBX stuff and putting all of this gear in a rack. And we're gonna be taking the patch panel here and redoing it all into a rack patch panel. But we're not doing that today. We're gonna to be doing that next time I come out here in February. So this has to stay for at least a little bit longer, sadly. I know I hate this setup. I think it looks absolutely hideous, but it's what we have to work with right now. But the last time I came out here, TSA took my crimp tools, but they were so distracted by that that they missed my tonin probe. So I left it out here and didn't want to bring it back because I didn't want them to take it. This is a cheap Amazon tonin probe that I got for like 20 bucks, but it's the best working tonin probe I've ever had. Honestly, it's more reliable than my Intellitone Pro, so I'm really happy that coming back out here, I still have it. So this is gonna be coming home with me. Uh, I checked my bag coming out here and I'm gonna check it again going back. So I'll be able to take home my Tonin probe. One of the tools that I did bring with me of my own is my TreadNet punch tool. This is one that I bought out here last time. Um, and it's okay, but it's really, really stiff and you can't control it at all. So I like this one because I can make it much lighter of a punch. I'm going to test a couple phone jacks that they have because they have phone jacks where they want ethernet. And so because of all of this weird patching stuff, I've already taken over a phone line here and used it for ethernet. So I'm gonna try and do that again, because right now what they're doing is running these power line adapters, and this one's going through a power strip because it's too bulky to fit in here. So I'm gonna hopefully take over another set of phone lines so we can get rid of this. Plus that'll also allow me to use the switch as the PoE injector for the access point. So this is the latest addition. It's a nice big, what, I don't know, 65, 70 inch TV. Might even be 80, I'm not sure, but it's massive. And so, if you guys remember from last time, there was a APAC LR down here using uh, a set of these power line adapters. However, when all the phone stuff got taken out, they took the power line adapters. The LR access point is replacing the Flex HD that was upstairs because that one died. So I just had him come down and grab this one because that was during the winter when this system was never really used because it gets really cold down in this area. So now that they're running power line stuff again, I'm gonna try and take over these phone jacks here and use them for ethernet. So we can then run an APAC Pro. And one of the things I really love about the APAC Pro is the fact that it has dual network jacks. So I can have the APAC Pro here giving Wi-Fi and then pass through up to the TV. I was looking to do some of the Wi-Fi 6 stuff here, but we couldn't get any of that stuff in time because this job again was one of those, hey, we need it done really fast, not necessarily done the best way possible. So while I'm out here because I had to come out for a different thing, we're gonna be upgrading and doing some other stuff. So that's why we're running the APAC Pros. Also, every time I use the APAC Pro is just kind of a treat because it's like the old reliable, it just works. It's got pass-through, just takes PO, it, it's one of, those, one of those access points that I can just deploy anywhere and have it work. Now let's test out these phone lines here. Oh, that's coming out of the wall already, that's not nice. And let's do tone and, 
Ah, why are you not working? The battery in the wand is dead. I just gotta go replace this battery real quick. Would you look at that? Ethernet and hopefully, yep, these are standard keystones. I can just replace these guys with network jacks. I'm just gonna replace one of these with a network jack and the other one's just gonna remain unterminated. So we're sending tone down this thing. Found it. Now I just gotta tone each one of these wires to figure out which one it is. Oh, that's gonna be fun. Ah, I gotta go through all this bundle. All right, I found it. It's this wire right here. I'm gonna terminate it to ethernet the same way that this is done. I know I hate doing things like this, but it will be fixed the beginning of next year because right now I don't have a rack or anything to do here. But I'm gonna be ripping all of this PBX system out, all these 66 blocks, and I'm gonna be replacing all of the phone lines with ethernet. So don't come after me too hard in the comments section because I don't really have a choice right now. Okay, so this wall plate was painted. That's the reason I'm not swapping it out with just a two port one here. And so the original keystone was also painted. And this is the one time I think I can actually say I wish I had a green ethernet keystone with me. You know, it's late and I'm feeling confident. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug this guy in without even testing it. I unplugged the other end of the power line adapter, so ditch this. Uh, where's my main port? Come on, no testing, work first time. Yeah! Woo! Now I just gotta replace this ugly blue cable with a uh, black one. Also, they have proper power mounted up here, but they didn't run any like conduit drop through the wall. So the cables are just ugly. I might see if they're okay with me just popping a hole in the wall behind the TV and dropping it down here. All right, so that mess of cables down here before is now just a couple black cables, a little blue cable, although I can replace this with white, but the blue blends in better. Um, I tried to straighten out the HDMI cable from just a little bit. Got the black cable in here, so it goes PoE from the switch into the access point, out of the access point, up into the TV. And now I just gotta get this adopted into Unify. But we removed this big long blue cable and the stupid power line adapter because, well, these power line adapters work, but really only in a pinch if you don't have any other option. They didn't have another option, so I just told them to pick up one of these guys because they wanted this TV up basically and working the same day. So I'm like, all right, just pick this up from Best Buy. Um, and then, you know, now that I'm out here three months later, I can actually do the proper installation. And I'm gonna keep these guys on hand just so that way, hey, if anything else goes wrong, I can be like, hey, just go grab these things, they work. So far today, I uh, woke up, got a call, uh, planned something really quickly, hopped on a plane, uh, bought a bunch of gear, and got a networking, or a phone jack, changed over to a networking jack, and have a new access point deployed. I'd say today so far is a win. Okay, so this was the Flex HD, and then it turned into the LR access point from down in the basement. Now it's turning into one of the in-wall HDs. Now there are a bunch of these extra cables here that they don't use, and but they could still fall back into the wall, and I don't want that to happen. So what I'm gonna do is terminate the ethernet keystone here to a male connector, and then I'm gonna tape all of the cables to this RJ45, so that way they don't fall back into the wall. All right, and we pulled an LR and replaced it with an in-wall. Now I just need to plug that cable back in and change the PoE type in the switch from passive to active. Okay, so here we have the APAC Pro and a Philips Hue hub. Power and networking into the APAC Pro, and then out of the APAC Pro into the Philips Hue bridge. And then there's also a phone here, although this phone has like never been used really, so moving off of here, into this room, this nice big open space, I have a Beacon HD. You might be thinking, well, this access point should be able to power, you know, this room, and you would be wrong. This Beacon HD is absolutely needed because this whole area is just a massive block of Wi-Fi. So I'm probably gonna leave the Beacon here and then coming into this room, again, we're just coming right off the library, I need to get Wi-Fi into here. So I could do a Beacon HD or use a wireless bridge access point, but there is a phone jack over here. Assuming this phone jack is wired the same way all the other ones are in this house, or at least a lot of the ones that I've run into so far, where this basically is a direct cable run to downstairs, I might put an in-wall HD here 
or at least an access point here. I'd probably put one of the LR access points. I mean, this house is basically a, a brick chicken wire house. So it's built like a tank. So this place could probably survive getting hit by three earthquakes followed up by four tornadoes, but it absorbs Wi-Fi. So if I want signal in a room, I basically have to put either an extender of some sort in that room or an access point directly, so. Also, can we just take a second to appreciate how awesome this looks? Like, that's sick. Okay, so I just made the executive decision to basically just start ripping out all the 66 blocks and I just cut everything loose. Uh, this stuff hasn't been turned on in years, so figured it would be safe to rip this out. Plus, I was having issues when I was trying to run a tone and probe over these, so because they were all, you know, connected together as phone lines, the tone would be going over multiple wires at the same time, so I pulled all that out. Okay, so I pulled all the personal information off this wall. Now I can kind of show you the whole thing. Um, yeah, so this patch panel, now I have all these wires loose and I have access to get to these wires, that way I can turn them into proper networking jacks. So essentially what I'm gonna do is have all of the lines similar to this. I know this is ugly, but this is the best way that I would extend a cable normally would be to cut it, put a connection on it, and then run it down to wherever I need it to go. So that's basically what I'm gonna be doing with all of these guys in the future and have them go to an actual network rack here. So we're gonna be pulling down the PBX system, pulling down uh, this guy, which honestly, this does some stuff that I don't know about and hasn't been turned on again in years. So the only line I have to be careful about is this line right here. This goes up to the attic, to the dish that brings in their internet. So yeah, I'm at least laying the groundwork for putting in a new rack. Okay, so um, one thing led to another and I basically took all the PBX and all of the telco equipment off the walls. Uh, it's now in this mess pile down here. So this way all the lines are now separated. Um, I was able to bring this line down here and work on it now. Uh, this is the line that goes to the upstairs den area for the access point I'm about to put in. These lines come over here. We can reuse this box here because this equipment isn't being used anymore. So we can use this box to hide all of the television stuff in and then all of the extra remaining stuff can pretty much just come out. I believe these are amplifier boxes for speakers because there's a left and a right and then a bunch of um, cables that come out. But yeah, all the telco stuff is gone. We're just left with this dinky patch panel and then my splice ins of phone lines I've turned into data lines. Now I'm gonna go put the access point upstairs and clean that up. Okay, so this is the APAC Pro that I first put in. And then coming upstairs here. This is where the LR is that I just put in. Got the LR access point that used to be in the kitchen. Um, not really a fan of just leaving access points sitting on the floor, but it's what I had to work with because we wanna keep those TV connections still there because they wanna put a TV in here. I switched the port downstairs on the switch to be uh, passive PoE because that's what these LR access points take. This is the old version of the APAC LR. But yeah, and then I just converted this uh, phone line here into ethernet. So this is the LR access point out of one of the bedrooms. I'm taking this out and I'm taking it over to the barn. I just have it plugged in down here so that way I can reset it. And then I'm gonna be replacing it with a Nano HD. I would replace it with an in-wall, but the ports are right behind a big piece of furniture and they're on the trim down on the floor. So I don't want the furniture to get in the way of the access point. And I generally don't like using the in-wall access points down really low on the ground. So it would be on the, the trim board down there, but in the bedroom. So brought everything down here. Also, the LR was using a blue cable to connect into the wall. I'm replacing that with a white cable just so it looks nicer in the bedroom. Time to clean up all of this crap. So yeah, I gotta get started with that. While I was cleaning, I found some more of this uh, cable tubing here. I used it as uh, edge guard on the rack in the barn. So I took some of the extra stuff and wrapped the cables going to the TV with it. They didn't want me cutting through the wall or anything. So I just figured, hey, at least it can make it one bundle instead of two cables. 
Okay, so I think I have everything cleaned up pretty much. We've got the old PBX stuff, the stuff that I didn't throw away, power bars and documentations, the old UPS. I'm going to take this with me next time I come up here and bring my car because I flew out, so I'm not going to take that 50-pound thing home in my carry-on. But we have things labeled here, so we have Ethernet, power line, Unify accessories, other goodies, stuff like uh, accessories and connector things for the UPSs and some other cables. Then we have Ethernet connections stuff, so that's tools for making Ethernet cables, wall plates, keystones, uh, the little uh, RJ45 connector jacks. Then you have cable loom and then the extra stuff that we didn't end up using. So an extra in wall HD, a nano beam AC Gen 2, and a second one of these guys. The reason I do all this labeling and lay everything out the way that I do is because they don't have an IT person here on site. They basically have a property manager and so whenever something goes wrong, which it very rarely does, in the past year and a half, I've only had to help them out one time. When I need to be able to say, hey, go downstairs, grab X, Y, Z, it helps when everything's all nicely laid out and labeled. So that's why I lay things out the way that I do. Plus also when I come out here to finish racking everything and making this not, well, that mess. It's gonna be nice to know exactly what I have on hand without having to kind of go hunting for stuff. But anyway guys, thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and drop a like. If you really liked it and wanna see more of me in your subscription feed, well then you can go ahead and get subscribed. Make sure you get subscribed though so that way you don't miss the upcoming video about the barn network, which is the whole reason I was out there. We had to fix a lot of issues, specifically when an electrician decides to be the IT guy. It, it, it doesn't usually work out. But anyway guys, thank you all for watching. I'll have links to all the stuff I used in this video down in the description below. But thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.